Holy Spirit, come and fill this place. Holy Spirit, come and uh, as we move closer to the manger. Help us to see exactly what that means to us. The promise. The promise that, that, that grips us, that, that challenges us, that changes us to be more like you. So God, we pray that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart here be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Well, I think we all know how the Christmas story starts, don't we? About Mary and, and all of that stuff. But really, the Christmas story starts before that. The Christmas story starts with a phrase that kind of goes like this. Once there was a priest. Now that may sound like more of a, a, a joke that you're setting up a, a for a punchline than the actual Christmas story. But, but that's, that's really where the Christmas story begins. And, and we have a tendency to, to skip right by that part of the story and, and get quickly to to Mary. Now Mary's there. Mary, Mary's a part of the story. But, but I think in order to fully understand and in order to fully grasp what the Christmas story has for us, we have to realize that, that before we even get to Mary, we have to talk about a priest and his wife. A, a, and the priest and wife that I'm talking about is a couple of the, the couple Zechariah and Elizabeth. Now, we don't really hear that much about Zechariah and Elizabeth. We hear about them right there at the very beginning of the Gospel of Luke, and, and then they just kind of fade off into the wh wherever. But we have to realize that they help us begin to understand exactly what happened in that manger a long time ago. The place where, where the story starts, it, it isn't in Nazareth. It, is, it isn't in, in Jerusalem. But it, it's in a, a place called En Karim. Excuse me. <coughs> en Karim is about an hour and a half walk southwest of Jerusalem. When uh, we recently took a trip to the Holy Land, uh, we had a chance to see in Karim, the place where they say that John the Baptist was born. There's a, a big church that is built there, and you can actually walk down to the place where they say that John the Baptist was, was born. But, but it was in this place that, that, that something miraculous happened. This place where the one who came to announce who Jesus Christ was to, to the whole community where he was born. Now, if you're familiar with the story of, of Elizabeth and Zechariah, you know that, that they took this trip to Jerusalem so that Zechariah could kind of tend to what was happening there at the temple. And, and Zechariah was called on to be the one that would go into the Holy of Holies to, to make sure that, that the incense was burning, to make sure that everything was, was still in order. Basically, it was just so that he could continue to do the ordinary things that happen in, in the temple to make sure that everything was still up and running and, and, and everything was, was all set and good to go. But my friends, this is the great thing about God. And I think it's something that, that we tend to forget here in 2021, is that God loves to speak to God's people during the routine things in life. Did you hear that? God loves to speak to his people during the routine things of life. 
but sometimes we can just miss it. Sometimes we, we can just dismiss it, and we're, we're so busy doing those little tasks and doing those little things that, that are all around us that we forget to take time, even in the midst of the routineness of life, to stop and listen to God. So, if you're familiar with the story, you know, Zachariah's there, and he says, there's no way that this could happen, and, and, and God j- shuts him up for nine months, and he's not able to talk or, or say anything. And Elizabeth becomes pregnant, and, and, and it starts to, John starts to grow inside of her, and then our scripture comes up from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 47. I invite you to follow along with your Bibles, or if you want to follow along on the screen, we'll have the words printed there as well. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. And then Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So you know how I shared that the walk from uh, from Ein Karim to Jerusalem was just about an hour and a half walk? Well, the walk because we know that Mary didn't take a a, a car or a bus or a train from Nazareth all the way down to in Kareem, which is close to Jerusalem. That's about a 30-hour walk. So so for someone in Mary's condition around that time of day, it wasn't just a straight 30-hour walk. That was probably a three- the four-day journey for, for Mary to leave Nazareth and go down to visit a family member near Jerusalem. We know that Mary took off quickly. Mary was just visited by, by an angel that, that, that told her the news that she was going to give birth to a son. And, and the son would be the son, the, the, the ruler of, of the world. And right before our passage this morning, Mary gives these words, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled. Now, I, I don't know about you. Sometimes for me, it's easy to say, God, I'm ready for this. Let it happen. And then when things, when the rubber really starts to meet the road, we start going, okay, well, well, wait wait a minute. (laughs) I know I signed up for this, but did I really sign up for this? Did I really say that this is what I would do, just following what you have given me to do? So I think Mary, a, a young teenager, did probably the most natural thing. Or maybe her mom and dad said, you know what, you're just going to have to leave for a while. And so she went to visit her family. You know, we, we don't know exactly the reason why that happened, but we do know that there must have been some relationship there between Mary and Elizabeth that, that made Elizabeth to be someone that Mary or, or Mary's family could trust for for Mary to go and be with for a certain amount of time. But we do know that that as soon as as Mary showed up in Elizabeth and and Zachariah's home, when, when Mary first said, I'm here, something happened, that, 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 that this joy infected Elizabeth so much that, that the baby inside of her leapt 
with joy, announcing already that, that the person that was there, the, the baby that was in the womb of another woman was going to make a difference to the whole entire world. So the first thing that Elizabeth does is that Elizabeth encourages Mary through the power of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. Those words help us see how in this moment, God is preparing a way for Elizabeth, for Mary, and God continues to prepare a way for each and every one of us. You know, I, I just would, would submit to you that as we move closer to celebrating the Christ child, especially in a busy and hurry and torn world, we must remember this moment with Elizabeth and Mary. Because this moment with Elizabeth and Mary reminds us of, of certain things. And, and I think one of the most important lessons, it reminds us that God brings people in our lives at the exact right time. See, Mary received the good news. Mary received the good news that, that she was going to be given birth to, to Jesus. But did she accept that good news? Did, did she fully live into that good news, or, or was she scared? Was she frightened? Because we know what the, 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 the circumstances were around this pregnancy, we know how the culture looked upon that. Mary could have been stoned by the leaders in her own village. So she had to go. She had to leave. She had to, to take off to, to a place where she felt safe, where a place that she knew that people would wrap their arms around her, to a place where she could stop and just breathe for a moment. See, it may not have seemed good news to Mary when she first received this message from the angel, but it took Elizabeth, Elizabeth's words to, for Mary to understand and to have the, the good news revealed to her so that she could live into the promise that God has invited her to be a part of. If you've been around for a while, you, you've heard me talk about banding ministry. A, a, what banding ministry is, it, it, it's kind of like small groups on steroids. A, and what I mean by that is that you don't have like eight or nine people that are, are, are sitting around and, and you're discussing a, a particular Bible verse. But you maybe have three or four people that you could really talk to and that, that you could really share what is going on in your life to help you move through some difficult circumstances. One of the favorite questions that, that John Wesley would give to people, and I bet that Elizabeth in one form or another would ask Mary, was like, how is it with your soul? What, what is it that is going on with you right now that, that might be joyful? What, what is it that is going on with you right now that, that might cause you pain, that might cause you or give you uneasy feelings? What is it in your life right now that you need somebody to walk beside you every step of the way? See, that's what banding ministry is all about. It's having a group of three or four people around you to help you move and navigate through some difficult situations. But not only navigate through these difficult situations, but to do exactly what we see Elizabeth doing in this passage. Allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through you so that you may receive the life that God has for you to stop and to listen and, and, and to hear and to say, no matter what you may be going through, I will be there with you. I will support you. I will care for you. I will ask some tough questions, but I will always be 
by your side. I think it's helpful to realize that, you know, while, while Elizabeth and Mary were both pregnant in different life stages and in different parts of this pregnancy, they were there together to help each other through this moment of time. Elizabeth was there for Mary. And I will have to say that Mary was there for Elizabeth. We'll be talking more about banding ministries as, as we move into 2022, but I want you to start thinking and to start placing a, a seed in your mind. Who is it that I can count on? Just like Elizabeth, Mary counted on Elizabeth. That, that, that Mary and Elizabeth shared what was going on in their lives so that the Holy Spirit can fill them and use them to bless one another. Another important thing that would happen that is this, that it reminds us that we should take the opportunity to bless others when we have the opportunity and not be selfish about this. I love the story about Elizabeth. El Elizabeth was beyond the childbearing age. A and Elizabeth had this, this shroud of shame that was placed upon her because she was not able to have a child. So, so, so when the Lord allowed her to have this child, she was excited and ecstatic. And I'm sure that once Mary came in, a family member came in, she would love just to, just to share immediately. This is what's happening with me. I, I'm just so excited. I can't wait. I'm, I'm, I'm getting in the nursery already. I, I'm, I'm making sure all the clothes are laid out. And, and you're here to help me do that, right? That's not what happens in the passage. As soon as Mary not even saw, as soon as Elizabeth not even saw Mary, but, but heard her voice, John leapt in her womb, and she was filled with the Holy Spirit, and then she poured out a blessing on Mary. She took the time to bless someone and not turn it inward on herself. She took the time to share what God has done in Mary's life and, and lifted her up instead of trying to make Elizabeth powerful and strong. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verse 13, he says these words. He says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. You know, sometimes we just need to hold our tongues with what is happening to us so that we can take the opportunity to listen and bless others. Elizabeth was set free after years of not being able to have a child, and naturally she would want to share the good news with Mary. But she took the time to bless Mary rather than bragging about what is happening to her. Maybe there are moments in our lives where, where we're so excited to share exactly what is happening with us, but, but somebody needs us just to listen. And somebody needs us to bless them when we have the power and ability to bless instead of trying to make ourselves look better and trying to force what is happening to us over someone else. And it goes both ways. It, it, it goes with those blessings that are in our lives, and it also goes when those things are not going as well as we would like them to go. When life is rough, when, when life is hard, sometimes maybe we just need to stop and listen. And the words that we hear from those that we are close with will help us see the blessings that God has for us. I think the final thing that, that we can pull from this passage is that we should always choose joy. I, I love that this Sunday, as we light the, the pink candle and we talk about the joy that, that God has with us, is that sometimes 
we can be in a situation where somebody has it better than us and, and we want to, to put them down so that we can feel ourselves feel better. But sometimes it causes us that we just need to just choose joy in whatever situation that we're in to allow the grace and mercy of God to, to fill us and to use us and to set us free from what may be binding us. I, I love the story of Elizabeth, even though this may be the only time that we ever talk about who Elizabeth is. You know, her name ha has special meaning. Elizabeth's name means that my God is an oath or abundance. That my God is an abundance. That even though Elizabeth, being older in age, and she received strength from God, and she knew that this empowerment that God had given her to share with Mary the good news, to remind Mary that, that while she may be young and while she may be looked down upon by others, that she is going to be a blessing for the entire world that the birth of the Christ child through Mary would allow people to be set free from their chains, to be set free from the sin and the death that, that's in their lives, to be set free for service, to, to gather those around us, to, to bless others whenever we have the opportunity to bless instead of curse and be joyful because while God was Elizabeth's abundance, God is also our abundance. And we live our lives in that abundance. It doesn't mean we always get what we want because we really don't know what we want. But we are reminded that God is all we need. His love his grace, his peace, his understanding, his joy is all we need in our lives. So my friends, as we round the corner and, and as we see the star in the distance, we should also be filled with joy so that we can then share the good news with our neighbors and invite them to know the Jesus that we know, the Jesus that sets us free, the Jesus that brings us peace, the Jesus that we have our hope in. Let us pray. Oh God, we're getting to that time now. We know as we check off the list that we have, as we start making plans or maybe praying that the delivery trucks will roll up to our houses quickly so we can get everything wrapped and placed underneath the tree for Christmas Eve. We know that that is not the meaning of Christmas. While it is a outpouring, uh, an outsharing uh, of what Christmas means to us, we know that we have a message to share. To gather two or three people together around us to share that message, to encourage and strengthen one another and listen for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. To allow us to take the opportunity to bless others when we feel like we have our own blessings that we want to share or, or maybe when we don't feel like our lives are going as we want them to do, but Lord, you call us to bless each other in your name. And Lord, to live our lives as the name Elizabeth means, to have that you are our God of abundance and that we choose joy in our lives so that we can be a picture or an image or, or a guide to who you are. To 
and have our entire lives point to the love and grace of Jesus Christ so that others may see and others may come and believe. So Lord, as we move closer to December the 25th, guide us and lead us to allow us to be a testament of your love. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.